Please take your spots. All right. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Sam Janssen. Today, I like to talk about the Open Smart Grid platform. Maybe you, maybe you expected uh, Jonas from the Bogart here, but he was sick, so I replaced him together with uh, you. <coughs> like I said, uh, I like to talk about the Open Smart Grid platform. Uh, why did we start the Open Smart Grid, Open Smart Grid platform? I work at a Dutch utility known as uh, Aliander. <coughs> And at Eliander, um, we're a power distribution company, so we provide electricity to the houses. We distribute electricity, and we see uh, a ch changing uh, landscape in the field of energy. Their uh, energy is shifting from centralized production to a more decentralized production, and what we need is more insight in the grid to cope with this uh, <coughs> with this change. And one particular example where we needed the open smart grid platform was for um, uh, switching the pub public lighting. Uh, what we have right now is a technology called uh, ripple control technology, which basically is a big sender who sends out the pulse over the 50 hertz gr grid. And then you have devices that pick up that signal and then uh, switch on the street lights or switch them off. Not really intelligent. And also municipalities were banging us from, hey, we like to have more control over the streetlights. So then colleagues were looking into a solution to control all those devices and, and uh, build an app for, for municipalities. And they found that the existing vendors were very locked up. It was a silo, yet uh, high cost on, on a long term and a big vendor lock-in. So therefore, colleagues decided to build our own. And part of that is uh, the Open Smart Grid platform. So Open Smart Grid platform is a, a layered architecture and can be seen as an IoT gateway between applications and uh, devices. <coughs> so uh, with an application, you can connect throughout the Open Smart Grid platform to devices. And current use cases uh, include uh, smart lighting, like I said, for, for municipalities, uh, smart metering, so you, you can read millions of smart meters, um, microgrids. Uh, we have an island in, in uh, Amsterdam, which uh, is its own microgrid, a small grid which balances itself. And that it's using Open Smart Grid platform to, to send out signals. We, we also plan to use it in distribution automation, where we want to use it uh, to get data out of the grid to prevent outages or to recover outages uh, faster. Uh, load management is a thing we're working on that's especially uh, relevant in Germany, where sometimes it's too much uh, solar power. So the, the Stadtwerke, the, the utility wants to switch off uh, certain uh, solar panels. That could be done with the Open Smart Grid platform as well. And the Open Smart Grid platform also contains uh, device management, so you can see which devices are uh, connected. And right now there are uh, multiple uh, protocols connected to the Open Smart Grid platform: uh, DLMS COSM for smart metering, uh, 61850, and Open Street Light protocol uh, for uh, smart lighting. So a little bit more detail about the uh, Open Smart Grid platform. Um, you get web services on top, and every we web service um, uh, fits to a, a certain domain, for example, uh, smart metering. That domain checks if, uh, if, if a command is allowed. Can this uh, application, is this application allowed to access that, this kind of uh, smart meters? Then you get a a uh, core layer which reroutes the uh, messages to the correct protocol adapters. You can have multiple protocol adapters within the same uh, domain. And that core layer also incorporates all the generic functions like uh, time synchronization <coughs> and uh, keep track of all your devices, so a list of, uh, a list of devices. And on uh, below you have the protocol layer which talk directly uh, to devices with uh, different uh, protocols. 
Key features of the platform is that it's uh, fully scalable and high performance. Uh, we build it so you can scale out to millions of devices if you want to. Yeah, since we're a utility company, security is quite vital for us because society expects us to keep the grid on. So um, <coughs> uh, there's state-of-the-art security and security is built in from the ground up. And there are a lot of security measurements. Uh, the platform is generic. Uh, I showed you some use cases uh, uh, fr from the smart grid um, uh, field, but you can also uh, add your own and make use of the generic framework, what we're having. And it's open source, FOSDEM. And <coughs> uh, we try to use as much as open standards as possible where we can find a, a, a good one. Okay, so now it's time for a, a, a quick uh, demo. Hello, my name is Joop. I uh, work for CGI. I'm part of the development team that helped uh, developing this application. Uh, I'm going to give you a small technical demo. Um, just going to go through it quickly. Um, we have different components uh, through which the messages are sent. Uh, we use ActiveMQ to deliver those uh, messages. Um, a small demo, we've built a device simulator. Uh, for the OSLP uh, protocol, so we can add devices here and um, yeah, just simulate the messages and uh, the control of the devices. Um, we also have a, a, a demo application, so we can see the devices over here, we can add them and uh, control them as well. So I'm just going to add a device. So the device will be delivered to uh, um, uh, to the platform. Uh, now we can simulate um, the device actually being connected. So I'm gonna add it just over here. So this simulates the device actually being connected to uh, the platform. Um, platform picks it up so you, um, it registers itself. I'm also going to confirm of register and then confirm. So the device is now uh, added to the platform so we can do stuff with it like uh, this, what this actually does is it uh, fetches the status of the device so it asks at the device, can you give me the status? And uh, asynchronous is sync. Uh, it returns the message, well, this is my status. So in this case, uh, the light is off. Um, it has no value. What we can do is uh, we turn on the light. It sends another request towards the platform uh, in which it says, well, I want to have, for this specific device, I want to have the lights on. So it gets delivered to the uh, platform. It processes it. And as you can see in the simulator, the light is now on. Okay, thank you for the demonstration. Now we'll take a look a little bit closer at the, uh, how it works technically. Um, you saw the demo application on the top and the uh, device simulator uh, below. So a message gets routed 
throughout the integration layer to the domain layer, then to the core layer, and then to the specific uh, protocol adapter. And to make the platform scalable, uh, we use uh, message queues between all those layers, and that makes sure that uh, multiple server instances can, uh, can uh, grab uh, messages. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that the Open Smart Grid platform is not a historian. So it doesn't store data, it just passes through uh, commands. But it does store uh, all the devices that are connected to the platform. So feel free to uh, join uh, the Open Smart Grid platform, especially if your organization that manages a lot of devices. I think this uh, could be an interesting project to look into and see if it uh, fits your requirements. Um, we try to be as open as possible, so uh, we have uh, extensive uh, documentation for free to connect your hardware or application and help uh, to drive innovation. Okay, thank you. Now it's time for questions. <laughs> Okay. What's it written in? It's written in Java. Hey, uh, I'm interested in the protocol level, the layer. Okay. Uh, are you guys have multiple <coughs> vendors, like multiple pieces of hardware, and are you writing individual drivers for each kind of device? Or do you have a box that you bring to your customers? Or how does that work? Can you repeat the question? question? Okay, th so the question is uh, how we do with uh, protocol adapters because there are a lot of vendors out there and how do we incorporate that? Um, <coughs> so uh, for the public streetlight uh, example, we did a tender to, uh, for devices and then a couple of uh, device suppliers showed up and then we had to adapt the protocol adapter to that specific device. But if you look at the uh, smart metering, uh, for example, and you take a implementation of the protocol as the protocol as should be implemented, then it shouldn't be that hard to uh, to to incorporate it in the platform. But but for now, every device needs some attention, some adjustments to to make it work. Are you going to open source any of that? Or? Uh, the, the, there are some uh, devices already. Oh, can I? Oh, can we open source the uh, the current implementation? Yeah, uh, we are already open sourced the ones that are that are, that are available. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, how many devices are you managing at the moment? And do you have like a big server firm dealing with all these devices? Or um, okay. Currently. Um, Question. Oh, how many? <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, how many? How many devices are connected to the platform right now? And uh, do we use the platform? Um, yeah, we're still we're still in the testing phase for that large rollout for the public streetlights, and we're we're planning to have uh, twenty thousand uh, devices uh, connected. And I'm not so sure how many servers are needed for that. Do you do you know? No, no. But yeah, we. Like I said, you can scale on, so if, if needed, then you can add, add more uh, servers. Have you given any thought to providing uh, data back to the owners of smart meters or the owners of elements of the grid? That would be what, that's one question. And second question, can you talk a bit about the, uh, the why you don't be historic about data? That makes choice. Okay, so, so the first question is, um, <coughs> are we sharing data with other, uh, uh, other utilities or data consumers? Uh, currently at Leander we have a program called Open Data, and there's, that's a place where we share some information. Um, all the information is shared with the market regulatory systems. So in the Netherlands you have a, a distribution, power distribution operator, <coughs> that uh, reads out all the smart meters and you get a different party that produces and delivers the energy itself. So there's a mark mechanism in the Netherlands that makes sure that the data from that smart meter is going to that uh, supplier or producer or consumer. Um, the other question about the uh, uh, data, data historian, 
why is not a data historian part of the open smart grid platform? Um, I think there, there are other solutions uh, to store data and to process it and, and analyze it. And it yeah, really depends on the use case, uh, what's best, what's the best solution. So th therefore we, we didn't include it here. Okay, yeah. Um, you said state-of-the-art security, what does that mean? That was a clue. Uh, what does state-of-the-art security uh, mean? Well, we regularly uh, test the, um, the implementation, uh, we do cert certificates, uh, we do uh, signing, we have extensive uh, user authorization model. So in case of the uh, public lighting, uh, we want to give a municipality access to uh, a certain area. Of course, not uh, other somebody else there municipality, and then that municipality can give access to a subcontractor, and that subcontractor can give access to another subcontractor. So there's a fine grain mechanism to authorize certain functions on on certain devices. And whoever's running this software gets to control who gets which access. Is that, or does it depend on the protocols in use? Who's actually you know kind of. It, it depends who gets to decide who gets access. Is that something this software does? Or something that, you know, as you say, for the smart meters, the utility decides and you haven't got any choice about that? Uh, so the question is, uh, who's, who makes the decision? Uh, uh, who's allowed to talk to which device? Well, that depends on the operator of the platform. In our case, we run it ourselves, but it's all open source, so you can run your own and then you're your own boss. <laughs> You decided to open source it. Uh, you mentioned innovation uh, as a reason. Uh, how did that decision go in the company? So uh, the question was, uh, uh, how did we open source it? And um, uh, how did we convince the management to make it open source? Yeah, I'm personally uh, one of the person that make that happen. So uh, I was already a big fan of open source. So I thought, uh, let's make it my work as well. So. Um, <coughs> I started to give uh, presentations to numerous uh, departments about open source and why should you use it. I think we're, we're owned by the society, we're, we're part of, uh, we're government owned and we have, we have a monopoly. So in that sense, I think it's also um, fair to share our uh, code, what we produce. And, it's a, it's also, and also I think it's a good way to collaborate uh, with others. Because otherwise you end up in a vendor lock-in situation where the vendor kind of decides to a certain extent what you can do and what you can do. And that's not a world I see working well. <laughs> and then uh, specific to the open smart grid platform, I noticed that the project was going on there. So I asked the guys, uh, open smart grid platform, I looked on GitHub, can't find it, so how open is open? <laughs> and then they said, well, Sander, we need to talk. So I told them about open source and why you should do it and et cetera. And then we attend OSCON and then they say that, okay, yeah, open source is the way to go and now we're here. Yeah. Sorry, ask another. No uh, you mentioned an island in the Netherlands where this is happening. What's it called? Uh, Pampus. Pampus. It's, a, it's a, a small island in the waters in Amsterdam. And it used to be a, a German f a fort, uh, and there's a restaurant on it, and they th they have their own uh, solar panel and diesel generator and that kind of stuff. So they they want to bal balance that out. So they got a programmable logic controller uh, on that island, and um, this Open Smart Grid platform gives uh, authorized access to that uh, programmable logic controller. Okay, so it's just one controller. It's not like multiple houses, each with their own EMSs or something like that. Is there one controller in that specific island? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, one, one controller. It's it's pretty uh, small. <laughs> <coughs> More questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was wondering, uh, Okay, this is a system running on a server. This requires power. What happens then? The power is switched off. You need an uh, emergency source of power, I guess, for the system itself. 
because so, we have some sort of a loop there. Right? So, so the question is what happens if there's a power outage? Well, that's our business. <laughs> 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 so uh, if, if, if uh, well, first of all, we, we got all the data centers, uh, backups, etc., etc. We got our private telecommunication network with also some uh, some uptime and. If you take a look at the open street light, uh, for example, uh, the devices are smart enough to load uh, switching schemes on it. So if the, um, if, if the platform goes down or the telecom network uh, goes down, then municipalities are not able to ad hoc switch their street lights, but the, the building uh, scheme is still, uh, still working. And uh, by that way, it should work. <laughs> You do not manage like batteries pick up on uh, the tower. I know that there are plants that, that for uh, photovoltaic they have like really big batteries stuff. Like I, I read of something in uh, in, uh, in Great Britain they have like some like big megawatt storage with batteries from Toshiba. So you uh, you don't manage also these things inside the. It's not part of the. So so. So the question is, do we manage uh, ba battery storage? Yeah, yeah that, that the battery storage c can be added to the platform as well. Uh, 61850 is one of the ruling uh, protocols in, in the quote unquote smart grid uh, field and also supports batteries. And that uh, island in Amsterdam, Pampas, has also its own uh, battery and it's connected throughout the RTU or programmable logic controller. How much bandwidth is uh, involved with this uh, smart metering data, which is transfer? Um, so the question is, how many bandwidth is there uh, within uh, with the smart metering? <laughs> um, I don't know, but it's not not that much. Uh, at Aliander, we 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 bought our own frequency and we built our own telecom network, a CDMA, but it doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. But most smart meters are only read six times a year. Mm. So, yeah, that should work. But I'm not an expert in this. <laughs> okay. Is there any kind of like uh, rules in it that you know that you can uh, program or turn all these lights on at a certain time? Easy, like a console like that? You know, you put a rule in, you know, turn these lights on at this time or turn these lights on at another time? So the question is, is there a rule engine uh, inside the, the platform? I know that there's a limited rule engine in the uh, domain layer, but I don't know exactly the details. But in terms of that switching schedule for public lighting, which is also kind of rule, that, that can be transferred to the device via this uh, platform. So the question is how to scale the 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 the, uh, the, the platform. Yeah, well, the uh, all the layers uh, consist of uh, multiple servers, and when the servers get too busy, then you can start a new one, a new one, a new one, and scale on uh, uh, vertically, horizontally, or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can take one last question. Last question there. Did you uh, own the development from scratch, or did you use any uh, already existing uh, platform or code which were already available? So the question is, uh, did we start from uh, scratch or did we use some uh, uh, other code? Um, from the uh, protocol layer, I know that we're using uh, open source libraries built by the Fraunhofer Institute and we also uh, give them some tasks to, to improve those, those um, uh, libraries. And from the development point of view, we use uh, Tomcat and uh, Spring Framework and, and more libraries to, to, uh, to make it work. All right, thanks a lot.